He's the director of the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. He's seen more talent than you can imagine. She's a 2019 inductee and a 26-time official in the women's Final Four. Trip Durham and Dee Kantner are in the house on the Delano Little Show. Tackle Sports presents the Delano Little Show. Welcome to the Delano Little Show. We got some very interesting guests today. Trip Durham, uh, Executive Director of the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame, and Dee Kantner, uh, a 2019 inductee to the North Carolina mm -hmm. Sports Hall of Fame. Good to have you here. We're talking about the Hall of Fame all day long. This is great to have you here. Trip, first of all, tell us a little bit about what the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame is kind of where it started from and, and where it's going. Well, thanks for having us. Uh, the Hall of Fame was actually born in Charlotte, North Carolina back in 1963. And the first induction ceremony was held in December of that year. So this organization is embarking upon its 70th year. Wow. And to date, 400 plus inductees. And we know how rich this state is when it comes to sport and not comparing us to any other state in the union, but North Carolina has probably a richer history than a lot of others. We, we know the names, you know, the D. Kantners and the Richard Petties. We're uh, all sports across the board. We're pretty thick when you, it comes to inductees. You can probably uh, stack it up against any other yeah, state and I, feel yeah, like you won, right? No question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D. Kantner, you and I go back a long way long because time. Uh, you uh, became the, was we the first NBA female NBA ref? Because I said I, I read somewhere it would say one of the first, but I thought you were the first. There's two of us. Okay. Violet Palmer and I were both hired at the same time in 1997. So um, no. I think Violet actually worked her first NBA game the day before I did. So maybe she was the first. But oh, okay. no, we were hired. At we're, the same I'm going to go with you being the first. Okay, let's I like go, that. Go I there. like that. And let me just point out, Trip. Uh, I've been waiting by my phone for uh, you know I was in sportscast for uh, uh, 33 years. And, I have not received a call from Well, America. one of the challenges that we have, not only as a staff, but as a board, is that we have to accumulate records. Yes. And we have to have solid records in hand, but we also have to have people to nominate nominees. So gotcha. what you need to do is you need to log on to the website, okay. ncshof.org, backslash nominate. Fill out the nomination form for yourself, and then you're in the system. That is terrible. Right? <laughs> self-promote. I think I can nominate Delano for him. Absolutely. Let me do that No, I mean, you. Have, you have a legitimate background to be in the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. I mean, uh, with everything that you have done, not only the NBA, but that's just small potatoes to what your whole career has no. been, starting in college and, and, and working with the ACC. and every, What are you doing now? Well, I'm still refereeing and running the floor. Um, I like to say, well, I, my first year in women's college basketball was 1984, women's division one. I. I started right here. Well, not here. I actually was in Asheville, but I was in North Carolina. And uh, I started with the Southern Conference and, you know, then to the ACC, SEC, et cetera, et cetera. And then I did the NBA for five years and went back to women's college and supervised WNBA. But I'm still running the floor in the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, predominantly those four major conferences and a smattering of some others. So I'm still out there on the floor thinking, I'm 30 years old, keeping up with those 18 <laughs> to 21, 22 year olds. You no, look don't, don't tell me otherwise, please. You, you look fantastic well, in very, very you. good shape. Uh, you were talking about your guns earlier. Yeah, got, I, I won't the take guns. the jacket off. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I'll <laughs> yeah, leave my jacket yeah, on. Yeah, Trip but, and I would just have to get off the, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the stage. Well, and you moved here because uh, you're from the north. I am. And so then yeah, it's interesting that you started in the Southern Conference because what was that move like from the North to the South? And are you, have you fit into the South? I, I think I'm a Southerner now. <laughs> I, I've lived in the South longer than I did in the North. But um, 1984 moved me, in, uh, Westinghouse Electric Corporation. I did have a real life job at one time as opposed to just being a referee, uh, which is not just a referee, but uh, Westinghouse Electric Corporation moved me to Asheville in 1984. But I left the corporate world in 97 and haven't looked back. So it's been nothing but basketball, either refereeing or supervising and since you, then. And, you know, I referenced stats a minute ago, something I don't know. How many games do you think you have officiated? I don't want to know. 
Wow. I don't want to know. I, I mean, you asked me about my knees earlier. I, they're still there. So if I give them too much information, they may crumble upon that number. So <laughs> well, I, mean, I really we, don't know. We take a guess, three three. Well, three, I would uh, say if you if you three. average about 100 games a year and you do 40 years, mm -hmm. oh, wow. they're simple math. That's mm -hmm. a lot of games. Yeah. And you're still, you know, I know the athletes are younger, but you have to keep up going back and forth down the court and Absolutely. whatever the case may be. And I but don't get substitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody substitutes in for me. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yes, we still, and I pride myself, and I've, I've made that statement too, and all, all kidding aside, that if I cannot keep up with the game and service it appropriately, I will get off the floor. Okay. Because I, my, my sheer pride and my service to the game We'll talk we'll a little bit that. We'll so. talk a little bit more about but that that's, and some that's other stories. Because I know you got some great stories. That we, no, we I don't hear. have any. Come on, dude. we got to hear those. <laughs> uh, Trip, Trip, where are you from? From Burlington originally. Burlington, So yes. I have. Danny Morrison was from that's Burlington. That's exactly right. Uh, Danny actually lived right around the corner from where we live now. So I walked me, by. former president of the Carolina, uh, the Carolina Panthers, Panthers. And mm -hmm. he works with the Charlotte Commission. Right, here former now. AD at TCU. And a, a former guest on the Delano Little Show. And a former one. Southern Conference Commissioner. I mean, he's a former a lot, but right. very president. There are a lot of tie-ins to this, right? Totally agree. And that's the one thing I like about le leading the sports life that I lead is that there are so many cross-connections. I like to say that the older you get, the smaller the world becomes. And when you're involved with the Hall of Fame and you get to see all these cross connections, Dee and I, before we came onto the set today, found two or three cross connections. Wow. And it's just yeah. fun with sport. Lawyers and plumbers probably have the same type of associations, but when it comes to sport, it's just different. Yes, well, we're gonna find some more cross connections coming up. I, I wanna hear a lot of different things. I know you've met so many different people as far mm. as the, the, the amount of people that have come through the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. So we're going to talk all about that and hear some more of your stories. We're getting those stories okay. out of you, Dave, all right. uh, when we come back to the Delano Little Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Delano Little Show. Here with Trip Durham and Dee Kantner. And uh, uh, D, like we said, we've gone back a long way. Uh, you've been doing this for quite some time. I'm sure you've seen a lot of. No, I didn't mean I like, it that way. That's, that's not what I meant. How old are you? Goodness, you've been doing. Yeah, no, I, that's all right, Delana. I do not. That's you know, terrible. But I, I'm, I'm not insulted. I'm, we, both I got, assured. we both got here in 1989. Correct. Right? So we both Correct. been here uh, together at the same time. You live here in Charlotte. I do. Um, and and what are some of the what is one of the craziest things you've ever seen on the, on the basketball court as far as referee is concerned? I mean, I know there's a lot. Craziest things. That's interesting. What category does crazy come into? <laughs> um, what was the worst? What was the worst coach you had to deal with? If that, oh, if, I can't you say can't that. Say that. I'm still oh, running the floor. I hear you. you know? I got you. <laughs> come on. I mean, I have ejected coaches. I have yeah, the worst coach, honestly. Uh -huh. And I can say this was a gentleman, well, I'm using that term loosely too, <laughs> was a man who coached uh, Uruguay. I was the first woman to referee a Pan Am game. I can't remember the year, 1998, I believe it was. I had Puerto Rico versus Uruguay men's game. Right. And I was in the NBA at that time. So the Puerto Rican team was pretty good because they knew I had some credentials behind me. Uruguay didn't know me from Adam's house cat, as the saying goes. I, did Adam have a house cat? But, so I made sure that the very first call I made, and, and by the way, it was a two-person crew, and the gentleman I was working, they made me the lead official. It antagonized my partner right from the get-go. Right. He had to work with a woman, and he wasn't the lead official. So I was just firing on all cylinders that day. Oh, you know. And uh, so I said, okay, self-talk before the game. Make sure the first call against Uruguay is going to be the most obvious foul. Most obvious. Nobody can, nobody can say a word about it. Right. Anyone could call it. <laughs> and I did that. It was the most obvious foul. Raise my fist strongly, call the foul, and I look. And the Uruguayan coach was um, gesturing, well, grabbing himself in a place that you really shouldn't <laughs> do that. Had, yeah, Tripp has his mouth jobs open. <laughs> in the States, I would have thrown him easily. But you can't do it. I'm the first woman in a Pan Am game, the men's game. I'm now in a position that if I threw him on the very first play, right. see, women can't handle the pressure. Look what happened. He clearly was the worst coach ever. Wow. I yes. It, it, and it didn't get better from there, let me just tell you. I had a police escort after that game. I was in Winnipeg, Canada. 
And I was very happy to see the Winnipeg police lined up around the court by the end of that game. Wow, wow. And I grabbed a hold of that belt buckle and got, you know, the belt and got out of there and just was like, yeah, that was the worst coach ever. Okay, good deal. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, so I can say that one out loud. I other than that. I don't want to follow a question after <laughs> that. So <laughs> you can take it easy. But other than that, kids, be an official. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, it really is. Speaking of that, speaking <laughs> yes. of that if, since we're there, what would you recommend to somebody if they, mm-hmm. uh, a young kid uh, that come up or man, a young girl or whatever the case may be, what would you recommend as uh, far as You know, first of all, business? it really is a fabulous, f- and it can be a career now. And we talked about this earlier, too. When I first started, it wasn't a viable career unless you were doing the NBA. You know, but now it's viable for even collegiate officials right. because the pay is good. But you know, once you earn your stripes, so to speak. But a young person who is interested, there are camps, there are you know, connections, high school. We need officials. We absolutely need officials on all levels. And you know, only because everyone always relates negativity right. with officiating. And there's so much more to it. Mm-hmm. Is it expensive to get into these camps for kids? They're, they're, they're... For kids, no. I mean, I think starting with grade school, you know, with the high schools and things like that, they'll take anybody who's interested, you know, truly to get their feet wet. Now, once you start getting into college and some of the camps, they can tally a little bit more. Gotcha. And I would imagine that Travel is, is tremendous as far as, uh, I'm sure you've been pretty much everywhere. You talked about the Uruguay. Yes. And the, uh, um, does I've that get old after a while? Oh, it... the, the travel during a regular season does. Gotcha. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, if anything that's going to wear an official down, the games in of itself are exciting. The adrenaline, the trying to get there sometimes is challenging yeah. through snowstorms, through, tri- you know, flight delays, whatever. So, Trip, I'm sure you met so many people. Obviously, you know, Dee, from uh, being inducted. Uh, how many, you said there were uh, so many inductees that have been over the year. How many did you? Yeah, we're 400 plus at this point, which plus. is amazing. And what I like to think about is that we have all these great personalities and you get the chance, not from an ego standpoint to interact with them, but knowing how special they have been in their careers and what they've meant to the state, just to be in the same room with them. Right. I've never been one to be, I'm doing the thing with the mic again. Yeah, I've a- never been one to be starstruck, but I do recognize when I'm in the moment yes. with such awesome representation of the state. And you know, what, what Dave referred to in, in what you asked a question about evolving as a potential official, you know, officiating is a pathway into a hall of fame. Mm-hmm. We, we have several them. that are in people our don't hall of think about it, yes. Absolutely. So whether you're an administrator, an official, if you're a contributor like a sports writer or a, an announcer caster. or a personality yeah. of some type, <laughs> which we've covered that in the first segment, there are pathways into greatness that aren't just numbers on the field. Right. It, you don't have to hit so many home runs to be in a Hall of Fame. You could be a 26-year-plus Final Four basketball official, and that's a pathway, which is which is really neat. It's a fun part of the story. Yes, yes. Well, we, you know, and I want to hear a story of maybe one or two of the inductees that you thought was kind of unusual or something that stands out to There's you. There's 400 I, plus. There's a lot of unusual. <laughs> We're going to talk about that coming up on the Delano Little Show, so stay where you are. Welcome back to the Delano Little Show. Trip Durham and Dee Kentner join me. And, and Trip, we were before we went to the break, we were talking about how many people have come through the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. How many interesting people? You, some of the most interesting people that you've had come through. I think besides so, Dee. Yeah, besides Dee, obviously. <laughs> I think the way that she asked, well, how do you define crazy? I think how do you define interesting? There are so many Hall of Famers that have so many unique backstories. Tory Holt, for an example, he and his brother Terrence dealt with an ailing mother for so many years. And Torrey Hope played at North Carolina, correct? North Carolina State. North Carolina State, and then he went on to play for the LA Rams. Then he had a great pro career, and uh, recently uh, he had the opportunity to be on the ballot for the National Football Hall of Fame, which right. is awesome. But torrey has got a backstory that his sports life was built upon, unfortunately, a sick mother. So she provided inspiration and stick to itness for him. Then you've got someone like Ellen Griffin who went into the hall posthumously. Ellen, if for all accounts and purposes, she is the one out of UNCG that really inspired the LPGA. 
Wow, yeah. So when you think about all of the 400 that have gone in, so many with backstories that not only lead to their own professional success, but also lead to the success of the state. Right. Phil Ford and Lenny Rosenbluth mm -hmm. for North Carolina basketball, they're the ones that help establish the brand for what Tar Heel basketball is mm -hmm. today. Just two other examples, and you go another 390 people deep, you got stories everywhere. Right, so that's, and, and interesting, so is, is a good word because there are different storylines. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of a good sportscaster. It might be in the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. So <laughs> again, I'm it's ncshof.org <laughs> backslash nominate. Shameless Delano, okay, right? I don't know. Uh, boy, that's terrible. Isn't it? <laughs> Dee, what was it like when you found out that you were going oh. to be in the, in the Hall of Fame? How did you know, that and Tripp said it that, you know, yes, officials can go in, but we never, you know, you never think about that. I never really thought of an official going into a Hall of Fame. Right. So when they contacted me and called me, I said, what? Seriously? I was like, I mean, incredibly humbling. It really is. It's, it just is, man, I've loved my career. And to have any kind of validation on any level, but especially on the level of North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame is really humbling. And, you know, just, it's, it was all, I was awestruck. And then my mother was a Dale Earnhardt fan. And so then Dale Earnhardt Jr. won in the same year. So I think she was more thrilled about Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> being you, there right? than I. But, you know, and, and again, just being able to be in that kind of company is, is truly humbling. Uh, you mentioned me along with Richard Petty. Have you seen me drive? Why was I in the same sense as he? <laughs> but no, it's, it really was. Again, it's just not something as an official you think you don't aspire to be in a Hall of Fame. And I'd never even realized it was a poss you know, possibility. But to be in North Carolina's Hall of Fame with all these plus 400 people who are amazing right. is just. And I like to break down the term Hall of Fame. Hall, in my mind, is a passage. Right. Fame is a claim. So it's a passage to a claim to be able to move from one place to another and to be lifted. And not that, as Dee mentioned, she didn't get in it to be lauded. Right. But yeah. to have that type of platform yes. and to be put on that type of pedestal, again, North Carolina, we've got 400 plus pedestal mm -hmm. standards. That's not even a thing, but you yes. get the idea. It's, it's pretty special. Is there an actual building that you can go to and see? Uh, there is. Okay. So in the third floor of the North Carolina Museum of History, there is currently as we sit today, a 3,500 square foot exhibit space. The Museum of History itself, uh, and I don't know how many people are going to watch this a year from now or 20 years from now, but in 2024, the museum will shut down entirely, go through a $50 million plus renovation. Wow. And in that process, the Hall of Fame space will go from 3,500 square feet to 7,000 square feet. Gotcha. So it'll be as much of the story of the Hall of Fame as it is the history of sport in North Carolina. Now, all those 400 that we talked about, are, are, are they display on display there to, for you, be, to, you to go and see? In some way, shape, or form, they are represented either through an artifact or having their imaging up in the, uh, the rafters of the exhibit space. Some way, shape, or form, they're all represented. That's pretty good. And you've been involved with this for how long? Uh, just a cup of coffee at this point. Yeah. But my hope is that as I sit here today at 55 years old, to be able to pay it back, pay it forward into a state that's given me so much. If I can do this for another 10 years, it'd be awesome. All right, well, we're gonna uh, have some final comments from you guys. You guys have been th fantastic. <laughs> I want you, you got the whistle? Do you have the whistle right now? Can, I go she, nowhere without she have one. Can, a whistle. Can, can, I go nowhere see, without a whistle. See, could you whistle us in the break? We're gonna, we're gonna go it's to break. Loud. It's loud. Really, I don't care. I mean, it's loud. Uh, Trip's been ready? popping his mic. I've been popping mics. Let's do let's need, do it. Do no, a, let's go. Do I need a foul? Do no. The floor manager. The floor manager. The floor manager's like, I don't know. We'll be right back, guys. Welcome back to the Delano Little Show. Our guest, Trip Durham and Dee Kantner, wrapping it up. And you guys have been a lot of fun to have Thank here. You. Trip, uh, once again, the, the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame is an actual place. Uh, your pitch for people to go and check it out. Yeah, so online, ncshof.org is the website. And on all of our socials, it's at ncshof. Twitter, Instagram, all the popular platforms. For people that want to come in person, what would you tell them? I would tell them 5 East Edenson Street in downtown Raleigh, free admission. 
come on by and say hi. All right, Dee, you're a part of it. Uh, have you been able to go, go there and check out your, what's, what's going on? Absolutely. And remember, Belia is just impressive. Mm -hmm. It really is. I, I highly advocate people check it out. You just don't even know the richness of North Carolina mm -hmm. sports history yeah, until it, you see some of this. Well, it's impressive. That, you know, when, when I heard that you were coming, I, I got very excited because I, I, we almost started our careers together as far as in 1989. But just to see how far you've come and you are so well deserving of North Carolina well, Sports you. Hall of Fame. And I will nominate you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank to you. <laughs> <laughs> Trip, it's good to see you. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for watching the Delano Little Show. We hope to see you next time. Thank you once again, guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you soon.